Hey everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this next series of videos, I'd like to explore core data. We're gonna start off by looking at an introduction of what core data is, how it works, and how it's set up. And then in some subsequent videos, we're gonna dive deeper into different things and just explore how to really use this core technology when building iOS applications. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so at its heart, core data is Apple's framework for managing model objects in your application. Reasons for using it would include things like maintaining state between sessions, it lets you plug model objects very nicely into certain view controllers, and it's Apple's really go-to framework for representing model objects in app code. Now to be clear, you don't actually need core data when building iOS applications. But as I gained more experience in iOS and worked on legacy projects with others, I realized that it's such a core part of the iOS ecosystem, it is good to know how this framework works. So when you do join a team that does use it, you won't be left in the dark. So in that spirit, let's now dive deeper into core data and see how it works. So the key to understanding core data is really understanding what these things called entities and the view context are. Entities are just those objects representing your model data that you typically include often just as simple structs in Swift. So they could be employees, orders, companies, users. Core data represents those as managed objects and saves those into a database through something called the view context. So you really define an entity like an employee. You then do your CRUD applications like fetching, reading, and updating through the view context. And by default, all that gets stored nicely, persisted on disk in a SQLite database. Let's look at a simple example to see how this works. Now, while you can add stored data to a brand new project by just selecting it at object creation, Letting Xcode set up the core data stack for you, we're gonna set one up from scratch just so you can see what it's like to add core data to an existing project. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to set up core data is actually add a data object to our project. So this is a brand new view controller project I've created. I'm just gonna look for an entity called data, data model here. I'm just gonna add that to my project. I'm gonna call it something like my data. And that's gonna create a file which is gonna contain the entity maps or models of how we wanna represent our data in uh, core data, in our project. And Xcode has this nice little GUI which lets you do things like add your entities. So for example, if we had an employee and we wanted to model an employee with a name, we would do that like this. We'd come in and go add entity. That'll add an entity up here. And then we click on this and give it a name like employee. So we're gonna have an employee object in our data model, and we're gonna give it an attribute, something like name. So now we can select what we'd like it to be, something like a string. And now if we go Command B, what that's gonna do behind the scenes is actually go and generate the core data model that we're gonna to use to represent this in code. Now Xcode is a little bit finicky about this. Sometimes it does auto-generate the classes and sometimes it doesn't. So what I'd like to do in this case, full clean with the Shift Command K, Sometimes that doesn't even do it. So what I'll do in these cases is actually shut down Xcode, uh, start it back up. And if we do that, then hopefully our employee object will be there. But that's just something you need to uh, wrestle with sometimes with core data. These things don't always auto-generate themselves that nicely. So now if I go into my view controller and I start typing the word employee, let's make a variable called let employee equal employee Hopefully something should come up here. And it does, it turns blue, which is nice. And if we control command click on that, this is the core object that core data generated for us behind the scenes. It extends something called an NS managed object. That's part of the core data framework. But watch this, if we go find, show in finder, you can actually see where on disk that gets saved. So down here you can see way down in these different pathways here under derived data, this is where it's gonna auto-generate and put your classes. And when you come in here, you can actually take a look at some of these things and just see what the core generated uh, classes look like and some of the core data things they're doing. For example, here's where it defines our name. As you can see, it isn't optional. This is something called a fetch request. Yeah, these are just classes that it generates for us to kind of give us all of our entity and all the supporting classes coordinated needs to give us that abstraction. So those are the basic steps we'd go through to add core data to an existing project. I'm now gonna switch over to a demo project to show you some of the different things that core data can do. Okay, so I have two very simple demos I'd like to show you. One is just 
basic CRUD around core data, how you can create, read, update, and delete that employee entity that we just created. And then secondly, I'll show you typically what it might look like to use core data in a application. But first off, let's start with a simple intro. And this is just a core data uh, example in a view controller that basically just does four things. It creates a new employee, it reads an existing employee back, it then updates that employee, changing the name, and then finally we delete it just to show you the life cycle of how all this works. Okay, let's jump into the code. So the first thing you wanna do with core data is you're gonna quickly find everything revolves around this thing called the view context. That's really the gateway into doing anything interesting in core data. So I've got a class that I've created here called the core data manager. And if we take a look at this thing, it's a singleton. It just has a single instance of itself and it has a stored property here called persistent container. This is an abstraction that core data uses to basically give you your view context around which you wanna do all your core data work. So for example, if we wanted to create an employee by say passing in a name, the first thing we would do is we'd ask our persistent container for the view context. And when we've got that, we're good. We can now do anything we really want with the entities in our data model. So the way to create a new employee is to call this method, insert new object for our entity name, employee. This is the thing that has to match the entity we created in our that GUI for core data. We pass in the context and then we get something back, an employee, which is our NS manage object, which was created for us behind the scenes. So now with an employee, we can do whatever we like. In this case, we set properties on this employee that we just created. In this case, we set the name. And this is code you're gonna see used over and over again. You're simply taking the context and saving your changes. So in this case, we created an entity, we populated it, now we're saving it. And at this point, we have a new employee saved into our core data database. That's great. Let's go through some other methods here. We've got fetch employees. What do we do when we fetch? It all starts with that context. And this is a core abstraction, something called a fetch request. So basically when you're working with core data, you're either doing saving or you're requesting things via these things called fetch requests. So in this case, we make a request for an employee. That's her entity name. We have some nice uh, Swift generic handling here. These are some newer enhancements in core data. And then we can basically fetch on the context passing in that fetch request. And in this case, that would return us all of the employees. In this case, I've chosen to return it as an optional array. We can also fetch a single employee. If we wanted to fetch a single employee by name, we could pass in the name like this, build what's called another fetch request. This time we're gonna limit it. We're just gonna say we'd like one result. We're gonna use a predicate to basically do our search by. You can think of this like a where statement in a SQL clause. And then when we call context.fetch, that will return the instance of our employee. And then we just do the same thing for updates and deletes. For updating an employee, we can pass in the employee. This is the employee that would have been changed. We can then do the save. And for delete, we just pass in the employee we'd like to delete. We get the context and call delete. So that's what you see basically in these eight lines of code here. We're basically creating employees like this. We're then finding them and fetching them. We're updating them and deleting them. And that in a nutshell is all there really is to working with core data. It's getting that context, building some kind of often a repository pattern, or in this case, I've called it a manager, some place to collect all of your operations around that entity, and then just using them to do things in your application. Let's now look at an example of where this might be used in an app. Okay, so here I have a very simple example of an app that basically has a plus sign that adds employees to your application, and then a minus sign that deletes them. So what's going on behind the scenes here is I'm just using those exact same methods that we were looking at before, only this time I've hooked them up via target action to some buttons in an application. For example, here we can see how when add employee is pressed, we call our core data manager and we create an employee, in this case, someone called John. When we delete an application, we can go in there and fetch all the employees. In this case, I'm just grabbing the last one and then deleting that employee. And then after an update and a delete, I'm just updating the count and that is fetching all the employees from core data and updating the label with the employee count. And that's it. And this is a very typical way that you could use core data just to do simple things in your application and have that be persisted.
So what's nice about this now is I can stop the application, come back to the simulator, fire it up, and if we go back into our application, we will still have our state persisted. And that's really one of the big selling features of core data. It lets you maintain and keep track of the state when it's backgrounded. And in fact, the only way to really get rid of or entirely reset is you can clear the device or you can delete the application. And once you do that and you restart the app, that's one way just to really clear out core data and get back to a clean slate around where you are. But it really does highlight how core data you know, saves things. This is great if you want to have online capability in your app. You can come in here, you can save your state, and it's a really nice way to refresh, and it takes care of all that plumbing so you don't have to write that code yourself. Now this just scratches some of the things that core data can do. And there's a lot of other built-in features which are really cool, like how to parse JSON on a background thread, how to handle migrations or changing data models, how to do batch updates, unit testing, and much, much more. So if you want to explore these topics, do hit subscribe, come on back, and the next couple of weeks we'll dive deeper into the and other really exciting topics around core data, and we'll see if we can't get both you and me leveled up in how this core piece of technology works. Okay, thanks for coming, everyone. Until next time, bye-bye.